At least one of you have asked me for an onboarding video and how I approach it for myself and also for my clients. So here it is. The technologies that people use are going to change this a little bit. However, I'm gonna be going over the concepts of how you should apply it to yourself and your clients so that you make sure your clients have the best experience working with you possible. There are three things that come to my mind when it comes to onboarding. So I'm gonna go through them in detail and I hope you find it valuable. All right, so ignore the notes on the side. You can read it <laughs> if you really want. Whatever your service is, you are going to want to get your client as many wins as fast as possible, but most importantly, uh, getting them started first as possible, as fast as possible. So <laughs> ignore the uh, script on the side, but getting your client using your product as quickly as possible. Now that may be you completing a service for them and you getting started as quickly as possible, but whatever it is, get them. So if you're like an online coach, getting your client training as fast as possible or getting them on a meal plan as fast as possible is gonna be number one. Or if you're running ads for like a real estate agent, getting their first deal closed. So a lot of people would think that they're the, the biggest win for that client is getting their ads live. Uh, that's not probably true because they've probably had ads running in the past but not got deals from it. So the bigger thing is actually getting a deal. So that is what I would focus on. However, this is uh, how I approach it for one of my businesses. And I thought it would be good to like show the steps in here as well. So this is the restaurant and cafes that I work with. So I've closed the deal and the client fills out the onboarding type form. Now that's this, this type form here. Uh, I just took a screenshot of the first step just to show you kind of what it looks like. So they enter in their business name, they enter in a bunch of other, uh, enough information for me to go on to the next step. So when they have completed that, the type form then triggers a Zapier zap. You can see that at the top here. It then creates a location in GHL. Now this doesn't use the lead connector, like integration of GHL. It uses just an API call and then it delays and then adds a user at the location as well. The reason I use the API call is because you can't do uh, create a location in the just the lead connector integration. So I, I do it this way because I'm not afraid of using API calls. So it creates a location in GHL, delays a little bit. So the reason why I've got a slight delay in there, uh, I've found that if you create a location and then create a user at like immediately, uh, it can time out, like it, it can it can not do it quick enough. So it, it just like doesn't create the user. So that delay is like a minute, then creates the user, which is the last step is a webhook to GHL. Then it creates or update, sorry, it updates the contact. So they've already been in there for, as a lead and updates them to closed. It then sends out a text message with this information here. So hi, contact first name. Um, I've created your access to our software. You won't have to do much in here, but I'll need you to connect your Google My Business and Facebook account so we can get it up and start collecting reviews. You can log in here. So I've just got a link to my white label GHL. Uh, the username is just the, their email and then the password is just a generic password that I set up. Uh, and then instructions on how to link accounts. So this trigger link is a Loom video that I've recorded on how to log in and how to connect their Google My Business and Facebook. Now, the reason it's a trigger link is I wanna know that they've looked at this and they know how to connect the account. Because GHL in itself, if you just sell GHL to a client, they're gonna have no idea how to use it and they won't use it. If you just get them to do as little as possible in GHL, that's probably better. So this could be done on a onboarding call. So instead of having um, this automated, you could do it via an onboarding call. However, I wanna get people started as fast as possible. So for me, I've found that having this instead allows them to start it a little bit quicker and it saves me a bit of time being a one man, one man show. After this, uh, there's a wait here. So it waits about 10 minutes and then um, sends a secondary SMS saying reply with connected once you're done. So I've got the uh, trigger link clicked so I know when they've clicked it. And then the secondary one is replies with connected. So this here, customer replied with connected. It then sends me an internal notification saying this person, this phone number has replied with connected. Uh, they've connected Google My Business, get to work. work. So that's how I do it. Um, this gets me up and running pretty quickly when it comes to my clients. Uh, however, it is different for everyone. So some people are gonna need different process. However, I keep it really simple and I keep it really efficient. So I don't need any super complicated um, onboarding steps. Like my, I, I, I used to get stuck in this a lot. So I used to like want everything onboarded and all this crazy stuff when in reality, I just need to get to work fast. So that's what, that's how I. Now, as I said before, some people will have different platforms. So it really just is up to you to how you approach that. But that's what I do. 
Moving on to number two is coach them like they've just joined your sports team. Whenever I was playing sport and someone came along and tried for the first time, I would over explain how to actually get a goal or, or, or succeed in the sport. And the way that I would coach is very caring and it's very, I really want them to succeed because if they succeed, I succeed and we win together. So that's how I approach onboarding clients. They are joining my team. If they are on my team, I want them to have all the information that they need and I wanna bring them up to speed as fast as possible so that they can start winning as fast as possible with me. And when someone joins my team, they have little to no experience of how my team operates. They've got no idea what uh, success looks like. They have no idea how to play the game and they have no idea who I really am. So from day one, I over communicate what is being done and you can do this through multiple ways. So if that's from your onboarding call, you can over communicate what the next steps are going to be so that your client fully understands the path that they're going to be taking on their road to success. Alternatively, like I do in my messages in the follow-ups from the onboarding, it is quite clear and like the Loom videos being sent that I'm trying to over explain what needs to be done. Now I'm not going wishy-washy and making it unnecessary use of time. I'm just over communicating because I want them to fully understand as quickly as possible. When it comes to your service, if you have a very like regimented checkbox style of onboarding, so there's a lot of things that you need to be uh, doing. If you wanted to fully automate this, you could use a pipeline in GHL and you could have it as an onboarding pipeline. So whenever a deal is closed, it moves them into this pipeline and then each stage you move them across. So just say you have five stages of onboarding. The first one say is create ad account, right? So you click and drag them across once you've created the ad account. And this could then have a automated message that comes off that anyone that goes into that pipeline, they get sent a text message saying your ad account has been created. What this does is it communicates the process of between the onboarding and the first big win. Then the client knows exactly where they're at and they are understanding the process is not just happening in the dark like some crazy facade, like it's actually legitimately happening and feeling better about that. It's like knowing your place in line, like knowing how far away you are from, from being seen at the doctor is, is, is beneficial. And the reason I say coach them like they are on your team is because this is this might be the first time they've played the game or this is the first time that they've played the game and someone actually wants, us, wants them to succeed. So if you coach them like that, they're going to be a lot more receptive of the steps that you're doing. And if you encounter any hiccups along the way, because you've over communicated and you've explained what you're doing, they're going to be more willing to accept the fact that there may be a delay or whatever it is because you have kept them informed along the journey. And don't forget, this person is come to you to fix a problem. So they want to understand the solution as well. They don't need to be able to implement the solution themselves. They just want to be able to understand the solution to their problem. As I mentioned in the second one is define success out of the gate and reward it when it happens. So just like in the second one, I use sports as an analogy, but the person that has employed you needs to know when they have succeeded. So they need to know when they have scored a goal and they needed to be rewarded for it. So from your first onboarding call, you need to define what success looks like and how you measure it. So for example, so using the real estate example, if your client is wanting to sell more houses, the first time they sell a house from your listings on Facebook or whatever, you need to make it out to be the world's biggest accomplishment <laughs> because then they are gonna get positive reinforcement from that that and they are going to understand that this works. They just need to continue what they're doing. So the first step in a successful relationship may look like the first closed deal. The second step in a successful relationship might be five closed deals. And then the third might be 20 closed deals. Every major checkpoint that you set along the way, you need to celebrate with your client. Now that could look like an automated Slack DM. That could be a automated uh, phone call that goes out that you get a message to call this person or it even could be like a card that you post to someone and you get an automated text message once they've closed the deal saying, hey, Matt Lamborn has closed the deal, send him out a postcard saying congratulations. I like that one. It really drives home like a physical uh, reward, which is just a postcard, but it means a lot, especially if the person has struggled with your service in the past, like you, the service that you provide, so Facebook ads or whatever. And when your client does start regularly closing deals, you need to continue that hype 
because scoring a goal with a packed out crowd is better than scoring by yourself. So you want to hear the roar of the crowd every time you close a deal. And if you don't, it could lead to churn and it could lead to the customer feeling a, bit, a little bit deflated. Whereas once upon a time, they were super excited when they made a deal. Onboarding for each company will look entirely different. And in my opinion, I don't think there is a gold standard for it. However, the biggest takeaway from this is get people started and winning as fast as possible define success and what that looks like to your client and get them feeling rewarded every single time they close a deal and treat them like a noob that has just joined your basketball team, <laughs> your local basketball team. I hope you found that valuable. If you would like me to go into more detail about the technology side of things, then I 100% can go through what I showed you. However, I think it's more important that you understand the concepts and how people can start winning as fast as possible because that will lead to better client results than you focusing on the technologies. Have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye.